Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, March 1st, 2022, we are continuing our coverage of the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine, and this is day six of, uh, of ongoing hostilities. We have a lot to talk about today, so we'll, we'll jump right into it. Uh, we continue to hear about uh, the Russian military advancing uh, towards Kiev. Uh, we have heard numerous reports out of the mainstream media of a, uh, of a large uh, armored and vehicle convoy uh, consisting of hundreds, possibly thousands of, of Russian armored vehicles. Uh, initial reports was this convoy extended three miles. And now some reports indicate that the convoy is up to 40 miles in length. Uh, we believe this convoy is made up of elements of the 144th uh, Motorized Rifle Division with elements of the 90th uh, Tank Division uh, also uh, possible uh, within that force construct. And obviously uh, there could be other uh, independent uh, brigades and regiments that are included uh, in this uh, task force uh, that seems to be moving towards uh, Kiev. Uh, I believe that this map is uh, fairly accurate. I know there was some debate in the comment section, uh, ref reference uh, the uh, operations near uh, Mariupol, and uh, if in fact uh, Mariupol had been placed under siege, uh, it does not appear that the uh, Russians have completely uh, encircled uh, Mariupol as of yet. So I, I believe this to be relatively accurate. Uh, obviously, it changes, ebbs, flows, and uh, and continues to change as the as the conflict of, evolves. But back within the uh, Kiev area of operations, uh, we're starting to see Russian airstrikes on uh, uh, infrastructure in Kiev. We saw a, a television tower uh, within the last uh, hour that was uh, hit. But again, uh, it does appear the Russians are being uh, fairly restrained uh, in some of the targeting uh, that is being conducted, especially within the Kiev area. We have not seen uh, a lot of targets in, say, downtown Kiev uh, being hit. But with that being said, uh, recently the Russian Ministry of Defense uh, has released a warning that indicates they are prepared to strike targets in in Kiev. And uh, we've heard one report where the uh, the the Russian MOD is uh, telling everyone to to get out of uh, Kiev. Uh, also, Kiev is uh, not uh, completely under siege. Uh, at one point, uh, leadership officials within the Ukrainian government had indicated that Kiev was uh, was in fact under siege. Uh, yes, there are Russian forces to the to the north and to the west, and in certain aspects to the east. But again, uh, southern routes into into Kiev are are relatively open at this point. The the capital is not under siege. Uh, and uh, again, could we anticipate seeing uh, that actually occur? I would say that is highly probable uh, in the upcoming days. Uh, but again, this is going to be very fluid. This is going to be a very messy, uh, uh, very long battle uh, that takes place uh, uh, within the environments uh, of Kiev, especially uh, with the ongoing uh, deployment of uh, Western supplies and weapon systems into the country. And uh, that is one of my big concerns, which could lead to uh, a, a wider war. On that note, I wanted to cover something real quick, a a, a bit of information that was received that a Ukrainian Su-27, apparently that was unarmed, for some reason flew out of, U of Romanian airspace. Um, by all indications, it would appear that that uh, aircraft had landed, and we're not sure why that occurred, uh, but it sounds like uh, that uh, Su-27 was then escorted uh, by, uh, by Romanian uh, MiG-21 Lancers out of Romanian airspace and then uh, then escorted to a, another air base by uh, elements of the Ukrainian Air Force, a actual tactical aviation from the, uh, the uh, Ukrainian Air Force to a, a air base someplace, but quite possibly in western Ukraine. Very, very interesting, uh, just in terms of why we are seeing uh, Ukrainian uh, aircraft quite possibly take off from Romania and then re-enter 
uh, Ukrainian airspace. And obviously, uh, it tells us a lot that uh, the Ukrainian uh, Air Force, uh, at least in western Ukraine, is uh, still operating. And uh, that is something that uh, going into day six of this conflict, uh, I did not anticipate. So it could be, uh, again, a very high likelihood that the uh, Ukrainians are starting to uh, operate uh, from uh, roadways as well, not just uh, air bases. Uh, they could also be uh, operating from uh, alternative uh, civilian uh, airstrips that have been created. And uh, again, uh, which you, you just really need maintenance personnel and, um, and obviously munitions to uh, supply uh, those, uh, those uh, fighter aircraft and then they can, they can, they can take off. But uh, with that being said, uh, still very surprising that uh, the uh, uh, Ukrainian Air Force is still up and uh, running. Uh, obviously, with limited capability, uh, it, is, it, is still, it is still operating. Uh, we have seen continued fighting, uh, again, along a broad front of operations with the uh, Russians attempting to advance. Uh, in, in this area here, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that city because I'll, I'll get it wrong, uh, but we've heard of a, uh, a fairly significant strike by Russian forces on a, uh, an, an apparent military base uh, someplace within the confines or near the city, uh, which resulted in the death of 70 Ukrainian servicemen. Uh, but again, uh, that had also been reported. Uh, we continue to hear that uh, uh, Kharkiv, or Kharkov is uh, is under uh, continued bombardment. We have seen a uh, a a very large governmental building in the center of uh, Kharkiv being targeted by uh, what what appears to be uh, a a large uh, precision rocket uh, that hit uh, just in front of the facade of the building, uh, causing incredible damage. And that's that's on uh, mainstream media as as we speak, and th and that caused. Uh, quite a bit of loss of life as well, but uh, we are seeing uh, Kharkiv under under heavy uh, artillery attack at this point, and uh, those operations uh, continue. And we believe that uh, the major uh, units involved within the Russian military near uh, Kharkov has been the fourth. Uh, tank guards, tank division, and then obviously elements of uh, the Russian uh, National Guard as well, and quite possibly other paramilitary formations such as res registered Cossacks, uh, paramilitary groups as well uh, that could be operating in these uh, in these areas. Uh, but we anticipate that fighting will continue. Uh, I, I, I don't believe at this point the uh, the the Russians are going to try to. Uh, Breach uh, Kharkiv again. I do. I believe they'll they'll try to envelop it as best they can, and then continue to press forward uh, with uh, with those uh, uh, heavy tank units uh, towards the uh, the Nepper River. It would appear right now uh, they're really looking. Uh, to uh, at least in this area of operation, the uh, Belgorod area of operation, is to kind of push for the uh, the uh, Dnieper River, the Dnieper River, uh, and uh, and and again, and then possibly push south, uh, cutting off the uh, uh, the Ukrainian forces that face the uh, eastern separatist area. Uh, we continue to see, as I just talked about, uh, the uh, battles taking place uh, near Mariupol. Uh, they, uh, they are reporting that they are under heavy uh, uh, artillery attack uh, in Mariupol, and uh, the uh, Russians continue to press towards Mariupol again. I, I think they're going to cut off Mariupol. I don't think we'll see a, a direct uh, entry. I, I do know that there are significant uh, forces uh, of the Ukrainian military in Mariupol, and along with a lot of uh, civil defense personnel who have uh, who have joined up uh, as well. Uh, but uh, that fighting continues. Uh, in other parts, we continue to see now that uh, the Russians have a firm foothold across the uh, Dnieper River, and right now uh, uh, Kherson is uh, is currently contested. Uh, we know that there are Russian forces in the city. Uh, fanning out, we've seen uh, documented video reports of uh, Russian infantry and armored vehicles 
uh, moving throughout the city. Again, uh, on, on the other hand, uh, the Ukrainians are still cl uh, claiming that they are in control of, uh, of Kherson. Uh, now, that is an ongoing fight. Uh, again, uh, we'll, we'll continue to watch this very, very closely. Uh, this is going to be a, a, another fairly uh, nasty fight uh, if, in fact, the Russians are attempting to physically seize uh, the the actual uh, internals of the uh, of the city, and uh, it it would appear uh, at least in terms of uh, Kherson that is their goal. Uh, I I believe they're doing this to uh, shore up their bridgehead across the Dnieper River and uh, and disallow uh, Ukrainian forces that could be uh, encamped within the city to come back out and strike the supply lines of the uh, Russian forces as they continue to move uh, both north and west of uh, the, uh, the uh, Dnieper River. Uh, which is very interesting is, is then what is their war goal or war aim uh, as they uh, cross the uh, Dnieper River. There's a lot of different options. Uh, one option obviously would be a deployment towards Odessa. Uh, that is going to be a very, very uh, difficult uh, proposition. Odessa, again, is, is, is fairly well fortified. There are a lot of uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, combat units uh, in Odessa, including a naval infantry brigade. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, terrain features in the form of rivers and lakes uh, that uh, will provide uh, defensive barriers for the Ukrainian military as the, uh, uh, the Russian military uh, were to proceed uh, towards Odessa. So again, it, it'll be very interesting to see exactly what uh, the Russians are up to in terms of uh, their deployment strategy on the other side of uh, the Dnieper River. It looks like right now, as opposed to moving towards Odessa, they are now uh, moving north and uh, con uh, conducting uh, exploitation operations uh, in terms of uh, some of those uh, breakthroughs uh, we've seen in the South. And again, but we just don't know at this point uh, how quickly and what the, what the Russians' objectives are in terms of moving across the, uh, the Dnieper River. We think they have one bridgehead across uh, the Dnieper and uh, that's in this locale right here. This bridge was never was never blown, and the Russians continue to operate along that bridge and, and, and cross it. Uh, but again, uh, that is the uh, the current status. Uh, again, very fluid right now. We are watching very very closely what is going to happen uh, uh, close to. Uh, Kiev, uh, obviously, all eyes are on Kiev because of the uh, of the media, and obviously that is the alleged location uh, of the uh, uh, Ukrainian president. Uh, again, it looks like the uh, the Russians are start starting to uh, target some of this infrastructure that allows uh, the Ukrainian president to speak, and then we could see uh, targeting on uh, the. Uh, other uh, communications uh, nodes inside of Kiev, along with uh, other possible uh, military targets uh, inside of, uh, of Kiev as well. Uh, we do know that uh, some of these areas where they're handing out uh, arms, it would appear, uh, may have been uh, targeted uh, by the Russians. Specifically, uh, we think that in uh, Kharkov, uh, that, uh, that, that attack on, on that very large government build, building, uh, again, that was an area that was being used as, amu, as, a, uh, amu, as an ammo and armaments uh, distribution point for territorial defenses, and quite possibly that was hit. Cannot confirm that. We've just heard that. Um, but again, uh, it kind of gives you an, an idea now of, of, of why the Russians are going after what they're going after. And uh, we could see that, uh, uh, again, take place in Kiev as well. Now, at the same time, we are seeing some rather indiscriminate strikes by the Russians as well. We've seen, we can confirm cluster munitions have been dropped in uh, Kharkiv and uh, among other uh, various munitions as well. So the, the Russians are starting to utilize uh, their artillery in a very liberal manner uh, in, uh, in Kharkov, and in all probability we'll start to see that in, in other cities. Because again, uh, the Ukrainians are putting up a hell of a fight. Uh, 
And uh, again, a lot of that has to do with their support uh, that they're getting from uh, Western nations. Again, and that comes in the form of both armaments and uh, very, very good intelligence uh, that is being provided to the, uh, the uh, Ukrainian uh, military formations. Uh, so again, uh, we'll, uh, we'll continue to monitor this, and I'm, I'm just very, very concerned about uh, the uh, a lot of these Western governments, Poland, Romania, United States, Lithuania, Estonia, uh, providing uh, all these weapons across their shared border with Ukraine. Because again, at a certain point, uh, the, the Russians are going to look to cut that off, and that's going to bring Russian soldiers very, very close, in very, very close contact with uh, NATO forces just across the border in, uh, in Poland. But uh, I, I at some point anticipate that at occurring. Uh, Vladimir Putin is not holding back, and uh, he is continuing with this operation, and, uh, and at least right now looks to, uh, looks to see it through till the end. Uh, that's the news for today. Obviously, we will have more as the situation develops uh, very, very soon. Have a good day, everybody.